So does he grab the checkpoint points? That's the question too. Does he kind of go out there and put a little early speed on and grab some points in the beginning? Because he could really, I think he's got a pretty clear path to victory here. Nobody's within three seconds of what he's been this year. So he could take a little risk by going out for it. And right now he's running third. Stefanovich, who's won this event before, not this year, is out first, Bernie. And he's up there in lane number seven. Smith running right there with him. Gonna be tight. Smith's taking that risk. I think this is a good strategy. You, you gotta take risk at this point. New York needs him. And oh, he's gonna finish second. So the six points going to DC. Yeah, that was big for DC. That six points, if he can hang on to him. Now, Brendan Smith went from second to first. In, in a 25, Stefanovic went from first to fourth. So he grabbed some points by getting second. He got yep. four points, right? Yep, absolutely. So if for some reason he can start to take it from here, remember, nobody's been close to him. And now Stefanovic has gone to fifth. All within a hundred. So he definitely, his main goal was to grab those checkpoint points. By the way, the jackpot, 8.5 seconds. And so that's where you have to be at the end of the race and at the 200, and it's four, no, please. Yeah, basically about four seconds yeah. behind the leader. Yeah, that's right. So he's, he's only got another four seconds to lose. That's right, he's got another four seconds, which definitely could happen because he went from first to seventh, all in a hundred. If not, those points would be going to Brandon Smith. Yeah. If he ends up getting jackpotted, they all go to the winner. Five seconds behind now. And Brendan Smith looking good, although Mello is hanging in there with him. He's only eight-tenths of a second behind him. He hasn't lost sight of him, so he's at least he's got a little glimmer of hope. About a body length behind. Iron right now running second and eight. Boy, yeah, now that's about seven seconds. So, Stefanovic cannot afford to give up another second. Or Brendan Smith, as you say so eloquently all the time, Bernie, he's coming for your points. He is indeed. He's already grappled. His teammates. Seven points, seven seconds, Sapanovich is at now behind the leader. So he's only got a second or so that he can lose here as Brandon Smith. Well, he's still gonna to grab a lot of jackpot points though. He's gonna remain on Bean wins the 400 free for the fifth time this season. And check out Sabanovich's finish here. So Toronto has been doing the leading here on day number one. DC tried, they have a chance to, if they can get a big performance here to inch a little bit closer to Aqua Centurions. DC currently fourth. You can see the team totals at the bottom of the screen. The energy standard one, season one for the ISL. And then we'll see who wins the checkpoint. Points, Craig Zerk. Trying to get those nine points. Gothi was solid on their 400 free relay, the B relay. He was 47-2 on their B relay. So you know he's got the speed to be able to, to kind of get out with these guys. And there is the, that big nine points. Going to Zerk on the first checkpoint. Fifty-two seven going out. And turned first by about a half a second. 
How does this play with his strategy now, this next 200? Ha, he handled it fine on the women's side, just missing the victory. She grabbed the nine points, still finished second. And now Zerk falls back to third here. Definitely a difference for the distance swimmers that uh, I'm sure a lot of them we talked about used to swim in their race. Now with some extra points on the line. A lot of questions, well, what do you want to do? Well, and, and this is where Aquanize needs to put their, put themselves back into it. They've kind of fallen back to earth a little bit, still within striking range, but if Champy can kind of hold on here at the halfway point, 149.3, the only guy under 150. And he's got about a second and a half advantage. So he's breathing to his right. So he's breathes right into his teammates. And then coming back this way, he'll breathe to his left and then two lanes over. That's Zerk still not out of it. Kroon moving up for Toronto into second. And look at this, 1-3 right now for Aqua. Boy, this is huge for Aqua. If they can somehow grab a top three finish between two swimmers, this would be big. And we spoke so early on so highly about DC trying in this event, but right now Zane Grothy not really in the picture. Unless he's gonna make a big push here down the stretch. The final 100 meters. Uh, he's sixth right now with 100 left to go. He's moved up one spot, he was seventh. So the two big draft picks with a Champy. Still leading out in lane number seven. Well, regardless of what happens, Aqua's going to finish at least a top two finish. Champy's going to be at least first or second. Grothy's yeah, moved down moved to in. third. Moving on up, Kroon, though. Half a second behind as they head home for the final 25 meters. Can Champy hold on and give Aqua the win here in the 400 meters? Kroon is pushing the pace. Champy's trying to hold on. And the points in the 400 are going to go to Champy, who holds on. And Grothy winds up second, only a tenth of a second behind. And they're right next to each other. Ahi, the veteran double Olympic silver medalist against Summer McIntosh, who you might remember just missed winning an Olympic Devon medal in this event, the Warner Freestyle for Canada. And the crazy story, Roddy, is you talk about that high rating, but the ratings haven't quite caught up with the performance by Summer McIntosh yet because despite the fact that she's got the fastest time in the ISL, she's the 11th rated swimmer in this event. So the aggregate rating of this one could be even bigger. Well, as she swims this more and more and has more success, her rating is certainly going to go up in a big way. And don't forget, and that's why you're going to see some rapids in here, perhaps, the checkpoint points. Yep. That's the 100 mark, and that's Leah Neal right there, who is going for those points right now. And if you go quick enough, not only can you get the six points, but you could jackpot the rest of the field, and you could even outscore the rest. In fact, she is so quick. She's almost a full second under world record pace there in the first 100. She's going to earn seven points as she's going to take away the point from Holly Hibbett because of her quick start. Hahi with four points. Evans with three points. So 10 points going to the DC Triton. And Holly Hibbett, when you think about taking away points, she's won this race before. <laughs> I mean, she's won it back in season number two. You've got five different winners, too. That's the other thing. We're talking about the four winners coming from ten matches this season, but Hibbett has won before. Not this year, though. Yeah, we're going to see the toll that that first 100 at 55-1 takes on Leah Neal. She's now moved into third. Maybe that was the strategy. Yeah, that, that's definitely the strategy. She, she went and got the points. Still first at the... 150, but she's going to slide down now to fourth, as you said. I think this race becomes right in the middle, man. I think you're going to see him stroke for stroke. Six 100 separates one-two right now between McIntosh, the youngster, and Hahi, 
Breaststroke appearance as well for Holly. 15 years of age, Summer McIntosh, almost 10 years older, right next to her, Siobhan Hahi. Oh, what a race, Murray. This is so good. Seven 100s. Oh, my. With 150 meters to go, Hahi and McIntosh going stroke for a stroke. And, and, and don't forget, Hahi has swum three races thus far. She swam the 400 freestyle relay, yeah. uh, two rather, 400 free relay, and she swam the 50 breaststroke. So she's going from 50 breast to 400 free right now. McIntosh has not raced yet. Cool versatility. Yeah, now it's 12 100 still. Anybody's match with 100 meters left to go. trying to hang on. Toronto would love to get the win because they want to jump right over the Aqua Centurions here in the 400 freestyle and try to keep pace with energy standard. Oh, what a race. We're going to get the best time of the season thus far. What a race, Bernie. Oh, and Hawaii still has the lead. Headed into the final 50. The teenage sensation trying to go up against one of the big stars for Energy Standard and Siobhan Hawaii. And Hawaii, this final 50, says we don't even want this one to go down to the touch. She is taking it to a whole other gear. There she goes. Oh, Hahi, the veteran with the race of the day, gets the win for Energy Standard. Wow. <laughs> That's all you can say about that race. Siobhan Hahi goes 357 flat, beats McIntosh by a full second. It's a pretty even prediction type of event though, Bernie. If you look across the board, based on what they've done thus far and the history of the event, they all should be about equal on the scoring. You're not gonna see any jackpotting, so it really comes into play that checkpoint points at yep. the first 100. That's going to be very important. Well, and Dumont, she maximized that she was first at the 100, first at the end, and she scored 15 points. In the first battle, Neil found herself third, along with that first place finish, and wound up with only 11 points. So she wasn't able to maximize it, albeit she still was able to get the win. And obviously, you don't want to do what Matt Richards did for Iron and win at the hundred, get the checkpoint points, and then your have team thinks they gone. have it and they're all wiped away because yeah. you get jackpotted. So now, Dumont gets six points. Neil will get four points. Evans, three points. Right now. <laughs> For the moment. <laughs> For the moment, exactly. So we'll have to... said Wilson <laughs> with the checkpoint points, not Dumont. I apologize. Yeah, it, we'll have to look at those plus points here at the end. Madison Wilson doing her job going out first. 57-4 on the way out. Leah Neal was has the fastest 400 free thus far this year. Went 401 in match one. DC doing a good job right now, running first and third. Joanna Evans right there at the bottom, kind of having her teammate bringing her along with her. Cindy Gallagher and Caitlin Sandino cheering them on. Dumont now swimming her own race, starting to move up. Patient start for her. Again, this is an advantage for LA, an event that the Condors are surprisingly weak in. So can they take advantage of that an inch closer? Oh, well, they're surprisingly weak on the women, and for that matter, on the men, too, coming up. Townley Haas, who swam the first week, is not swimming this week. Or at least he's not swimming this first day because he is not entered in the 400 freestyles. Coach Marsh is looking on, and his, his kids are doing pretty good right now, running third and fourth.
Right now, DC finds themselves just a point in front of the Aqua Centurions. Aqua currently fourth, DC third. And LA would like to narrow the margin with the Condors here by day's end. Cali running seventh and eighth right now, so this is certainly going to help LA Currents situation on trying to move up on Cali. Jackpot is 9.4 seconds, Bernie. Yep. Doesn't That's even bigger if you could win and you could take away the points right. completely from Cali. It's a clean sweep, but right now the jackpot points would go to Neil. They would go to DC. Boy, you love the way DC's looking right now. They were both 30.7, 30.8. LA was 30.9 and Wilson 31.2. So it looks like DC, if they can hang on here and get first and second, boy, that's going to do a big time favor for them, especially against Aqua. They're in a big battle with Aqua. Final 25, Wilson trying to make a final push. Neil trying to hold on to the victory, and the win goes to Wilson. Wilson has won it at the final moment whose highest finish is second, has actually scored 16 points. So you can expect Simonova to be pushing the pace the first 100. Again, there is a checkpoint at the 100 meters where six points goes to the leader at that moment. Yeah, those extra points are so valuable at that first 100, Bernie, if you can hang on to them. Again, if you're not familiar with this, at the 100 mark, whoever is in the lead picks up extra points. They pick up six. Yep, six points. Six points. But all the, the way down to one point for fifth. That's right. All the way down to one point for fifth. But if you get jackpotted and you sprint out to that first 100 and grab those points and then end up getting jackpotted, those points don't really mean much. And we saw a hand touch earlier. By Energy Center, we'll see if we get that hand touch here. We get a flip. It is, oh, oh Simonova by five one hundredths of a second. They'll take those extra two points. Wow, that She's was. got her feet over faster, man. That I thought for sure that Madden was there first, too. right? And it's only four points. And look at that, no, actually, they jackpotted a couple swimmers, that's, which is possible as well. Simonova actually ends up scoring nine points there. That is huge. Now the question is how does Simonova, and for that mad, matter, Madden, hang on to those points. It certainly looks at this 150 mark. They're not going to have a problem with that. And then if you're iron in Tokyo, you definitely keep your eye on Aqua, who's running third and fourth. Nice, nice little spots for them. They grab some points also at that checkpoint. Simonova has been really valuable in the freestyle events for Iron. She can swim all the way down to the 100. The Madden's primarily 200 and 400, but Simonova can go down to the 100, all the way up to the 400. And there she is, 158 plus. They're at the 200 mark. Paige Madden right there with her. You see Paige Madden right hugging against that lane line, trying to get a little bit of a draft if possible, if she's gonna fall a little behind. Might as well ride your hip if you're gonna do that. And the 400 free means a little more when you're vying for the playoff spot, as Iron is right here. Not that it didn't during the regular season, but I'm sure that these swimmers are really trying to outperform here because of the spot their team is in. I'm a little surprised that Hibbett, way over there to the far right in lane, excuse me, Taylor to the far right, is not in better position. She has been as high as second this year, but right now running sixth and falling further behind. Dave Sale is hoping that Paige Madden can answer back, and these two have been stroke for stroke for about 200 yards. I feel like Madden had the early lead, and Simonova worked her way right back into it. And they continue to battle here. Hey. They have been this way, Bernie, the entire way. 325 meters, they have been stroke for stroke. Hundreds of a second separated them at the 100 mark. The same at the 200 mark. And now at 350, 
It's virtually a dead even race again. Three one hundredths of a second. What a race this is. Down to the final 50 to decide it. Andrasenko has moved into third for Iron, so they have a chance for some really big points here in Tokyo. And Iron trying to win match 10. Battling Simonova a little bit better turn. Is she going to push the final 25? Does she have the final answer? Can she get it done for Iron? Yes, she can. First at the 100, first at the finish, and Iron, they go 1-2.